Good afternoon. So my name is Shamian Evans, and this piece I wrote about a month ago entitled Fishing, and I could certainly use your positive energy. I'm used to performing in churches only, so this is a bit of a stretch for me. Yes. The others. I wonder if that's how our ancestors felt when they were first set free. That is, when the chains fell off and they were told, go out and be all you can be. It's true the 13th Amendment abolished the peculiar institution once and for all. But true freedom remained elusive for those released from its claws. The 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments sure look good on paper. But exercising these freedoms were an entirely different matter altogether. You can go here, but you can't do that. You can enter here, but don't sit there. You can say this, but don't dare say that. And you can move up, but not, not quite that far. It was clear for those who were chocolatey brown, the system didn't privilege them. Rather, cast as other, they were forced to find their way through exclusive and oppressive systems. I wonder how it felt for those considered normative, you know, those with the right skin color and those who could pass, those who enjoyed privilege and the associated power and chose not to take a stand. Essentially, I wondered about those who buried their heads in the sand. I'm reminded of a fishing trip. Down a steep ladder, I descended to enter a boat sitting on Fisherman's Wharf. I fished laughed and idled the time away and up the ladder I ascended at the end of the trip that day. I was thrilled, elated really, and believed all of my friends should join in on this fun. So I began the conversation, made a few phone calls, and one of my friends said, I, I'd rather not be one. Why is that? I asked. She said, is there a ramp I can access because I can't climb a ladder? Perhaps a limit on body weight? What about the safety precautions? Are they designed with someone like me in mind? Is there even a place on this boat for me to sit? Essentially, is there room for me at this table, Shimeon? In this schema, where do I fit? I see. I recognized in that moment that, that particular system privileged me. I didn't have to look back, didn't have to care. I had free access and the others, well, I didn't have to make phone calls to inquire about their inclusive aims. Why wasn't there a ramp? And exactly what precautions were they taking? Essentially, even though I knew something wasn't quite right, I could choose to take a stand or bury my head in the alluring, comfortable, privileged, exclusive, hierarchical, dominant sand, and I could do it without ever having to take responsibility. Nothing really had to be done. Now, fishing, anyone? During Black History Month, we uplift heroes like Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr., Sojourner Truth, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Bayard Rustin, Phyllis Wheatley, Maya Angelou, Medgar Evers, Ida B. Wells, Bessie Coleman, Thurgood Marshall, Mae Jemison, Madam C.J. Walker, Frederick Douglass, and W.B.E. D.B. Du Bois, just to name a few. But it seems right to also trouble the waters, Trayvon Martin, based on some undeniable things, Eric Garner, that continue to come into our view, Michael Brown. Something isn't quite right. And what exactly are we inclined, moved, compelled? What are we called to do? Do we celebrate Black History Month? Hooray! Then say, the rest of the work, my friend, is up to you. Or do we cry out as spiritual leaders, activists, advocates, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, guardians, friends, acknowledging the realities of our time? because I believe it is a dream of our ancestors that we forge ahead no matter the obstacles faced. Remembering we stand on the shoulders of formidable giants. This is our cloth, and no weapon formed against us shall. You know, maybe, maybe it's just me. Perhaps we really do live in a post-racial society. So anyway, I think my time here is done. Let's see my rod.
Bates, money, and plenty of sand. Fishing? Anyone?